Najee Harris is a part of a large group of running backs right now that are trying desperately to save their careers and their paychecks. But I don't think it's going to work out in their favor. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strachman. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talkers. Subscribe anywhere you get your podcast today. Let's talk about the running back market and Najee Harris's input on what is happening. After the franchise tag extension deadline came and gone, Josh Jacobs and Saquon Barkley both left without long-term deals with their respected tr franchises, everyone seemingly that plays running back and is a high name, high profile in the NFL has sounded off on the NFL and what is quickly turning into a very running back unfriendly market. Right now, the running back position, well, it's valued probably lower than it's ever been. And Yesterday was crazy because we talked about Le'Veon Bell and his apology to the Steelers fans and how in the moment back in the day, he was trying to save a running back market that was starting to decline, a position that was becoming less and less valued. And many people thought, well, he's getting a little greedy. He's looking for too much money. In today's NFL, it seems as if these guys are just simply looking to get paid reasonable money, reasonable paychecks or what they are expected to do, the tolls that they take on their body and the impact that they have on a game, and, and it doesn't seem to be happening. So names like Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler and Najee Harris are, well, voicing their opinions. And Najee went on Twitter and said this, quote, I agree with my running back brothers around the NFL. History will show you that you need running backs to win. We set the tone every game and run through walls for our team and lead in many ways. This notion that we deserve less is a joke. The problem with the running back market right now is that it's uncertain what they are asking for. Saquon Barkley and Josh Jacobs both went unsigned, and those are the two big names because they respectively finished two of the top five spots in rushing yards just a year ago. They are both under 27 years old. They are just finishing off their rookie contracts. It appears that they are in the prime of their career, but in the NFL, they are viewed as near the end of a very short-lived prime. For the running back market, it is explode onto the scene, and within two years, you are almost worthless. You have no legs left. You have no speed or get-off. You are not the same superstar that you once were by 27 when you're only 25 now. But there is a big question before we get into Najee Harris and how the Pittsburgh Steelers will likely handle that situation. The biggest situation is what are these guys asking for? What is the running back market looking to do? Because right now there are only two names, Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara, who make more than $12.5 million a season. Derrick Henry makes 12.5. Nick Chubb makes 12.2. Aaron Jones makes 11.5. Christian McCaffrey makes 16 and Alvin Kamara makes 15 a year. Both of those two players are over the age of 27. Derrick Henry is 29 and Nick Chubb is 28. According to Spotrack, Saquon Barkley's market value is roughly $12.3 million per season. There are reports out there that the New York Giants offered Barkley two contracts, both of them roughly around $12.5 million a year with upwards of $14 million a year. So that is the big question. What are the running backs asking for? Are they looking for $15-plus million a season? Are they looking for wide receiver money? Are they looking for more? Because if $12.5 million isn't your starting point or your ending point, it isn't a compromise you are willing to make, Maybe the market is in for an even harder crash than we imagined. Maybe these guys aren't looking for a deal that isn't a reasonable salary compared to what their peers make. Maybe they're looking for Le'Veon Bell type money. Maybe they're looking for that contract that resets the market in a market that, well, the NFL controls right now and is saying, we're not resetting. It gets even trickier once you start talking about Najee Harris. The Steelers running back is entering his third NFL season. 
He has back-to-back thousand-yard rushes. He has a brand new offensive line that for the first time in three years looks like it's capable of actually doing something. He has a quarterback that, you know, isn't Ben Roethlisberger, but should add some spark after a down year last year. And an offense and a defense as a whole that, well, the Steelers' expectations are rather high, maybe too high. But he is 25 years old, and he's only entering his third NFL season. So by the time that this year comes and goes, and he's on to his contract negotiations next year, he'll be 26. And by the time that season's over and he's ready to start year one of his second contract, if the Pittsburgh Steelers do not pick up his fifth year option, he's going to be 27. And 27 is the fall off for NFL running backs. In a league right now, 27 is where, well, you're done. You get paid minimum. You're a backup. Your stardom is over. And Najee Harris will just then be entering his second contract. Which raises the question, what will the Steelers do? How tricky is this situation? Is it even worth talking about? Because are the Steelers even going to consider it? I think that's the biggest thing here is the Pittsburgh Steelers are a team where, yes, Najee Harris has that in his favor of a family atmosphere. The Steelers love to give their guys money if they feel they are deserved. But at the same time, the Steelers are in tight situations with a number of players. Right now, they look at it with, Alex Highsmith needs a new contract. Maybe they give it to him. Maybe they don't. Next season, Pat Fryermuth needs to negotiate a contract. Chances are he's number one on the list of priorities when the Steelers go to extend their young guys. Cam Hayward, if Father Time doesn't catch him anytime soon, which, judging off of the past couple seasons, he's not going to, you have to extend him if you choose to keep him. You're only a few years removed at this point from Kenny Pickett, and I get it. Those four years are a long time away. But in those four years, by the time Najee Harris's first contract or first year of a new contract kicks in, you're two years out. Which means that you have to factor in what Kenny Pickett is going to make when you talk about Najee Harris. The Steelers work years down the road. This is not a, well, this is happening right now. This is what we can afford right now. We keep it moving. No. Omar Khan is a salary cap wizard because he understands that the future is just as important as the right now. And Kenny Pickett is the biggest part of this future, and he will get paid accordingly if he succeeds. The Steelers need to keep that in mind, and they're going to. On top of that, George Pickens is going to be in the mix at the same time. There will be other names. Deontay Johnson's contract will be up. You have options. You have concerns. You have contracts that probably step a bit higher than Najee Harris's. And even if he is a thousand yard rusher every single season with the Pittsburgh Steelers, it's tough to sit around and say, yeah, this guy's going to get another deal. He'll be 27 years old and the Steelers will stick it out for another three seasons. At 27 years old, taking the amount of touches that Najee Harris has taken over the last two years with almost no expectation that that will dim anytime soon, you're looking at a guy that's going to have a thousand plus carries in four or five seasons. 15 touches, 15 times that he's getting hit, 1,500 times that he's getting hit before his next contract. It's a very difficult situation for anybody to be in, especially in a valued market that has decreased significantly. In the long run, Najee Harris deserves a second contract, but Saquon Barkley deserves more money and Josh Jacobs deserves more money as well. Derrick Henry, if that is your platform, shouldn't be making $12.5 million a season because if Saquon's making 14, Derek should probably making be making 14, maybe 15. But that's what the market and the world that we're in. And the Steelers, chances are, have a tough decision to make with a guy that they invested in and who's going to be their running back and is going to be a very, very strong part of this offense for the next two plus seasons I mean, Najee Harris will be the heart and soul of the Pittsburgh Steelers in 2023, and chances are 2024. But when that contract is up, and you look at all the variables, and you look at everything around him, the Pittsburgh Steelers might already have it in their heads. But if they don't, they're going to realize very quickly, they're not going to pay this guy. They're going to sit down, and they're going to realize, unless he's taken a very small 
contract in that second go. Unless he's taking money that maybe puts him in the the marks of Miles Sanders or James Conner, who make six, seven million dollars a year. It's tough to say the Steelers are going to give him a shot and give him a deal. So chances are Najee Harris is in a very, very bad spot. And it's tough because of how his journey went on and his years at Alabama and the blow that his body will take in Pittsburgh because of a rebuilt offense. But this is the world that we're in, and unfortunately, the running backs are taking the hit in this. And Najee Harris stands almost no chance of surviving it because of everything else going on around him. 